One, two, three. This video is going to do three things. Make your life easier, save you time, and actually change the way you design logos altogether. And once I implemented these into my workflow, the quality and creativity of my designs actually improved as well. And the best part is that anyone can do this with no mad hand skills required. So first up, one of the biggest mistakes when designing logos is using the wrong tools. But to be fair, Illustrator these days is an absolute behemoth. There are just so many tools with tools buried under under tools and knowing which ones to use and how to combine them together can be well frustrating. For example, you may have used the pen tool before and you may very much dislike using the pen tool because oftentimes it doesn't give you the result you're looking for. And if you were say drawing a game controller shape using this tool, you might end up with something that looks like this, which let's be honest, isn't ideal. Now of course you can practice and get better with the pen tool, but this takes a lot of practice which takes time and in this situation you may find yourself thinking, my god, there must be an easier way to do this. And the good news is, yes, there is. So, if you're creating complex or slightly quirky shapes for a logo design, try this instead. Start by creating the design out of basic shapes using rectangles, ellipses, circles, etc. Then once you've blocked out the basic structure, combine these shapes together using the Pathfinder option Unite. Now that everything has been combined, select the Direct Selection tool and these corner widgets will appear. This will enable you to round off the corners as much or as little as you'd like. In fact, you can keep adjusting the corner radius until the red line appears, which indicates that it cannot be rounded any further. So, using this example, I can very quickly create a symmetrical game controller shape for my logo without actually having to manually draw anything. And these corner widgets are all editable, which gives us a lot more flexibility when designing. Just in case that dreaded feedback comes in and you need to make some changes. You can also double click the corner widget to adjust the corner type or enter a specific value if you'd like two corners to have the same radius. And if you integrate this technique into your workflow, I can guarantee you that it will make your life easier, especially when designing those more complex shapes. Okay, so that first section was pretty much me saying don't use the pen tool. But now we're actually going to use it. Yeesh, this is awkward. So here's a guitar logo that I designed in a recent video. Please don't watch it, it's awful. Which I think looks pretty good. It's clean, the mark accurately represents part of a guitar, and the word as a whole is clearly legible. And generally, I think these traits are important for any good logo design. Especially now, a time when brands are favoring that more simplified logo design style. However, sometimes when making something simpler and simpler, those important or identifiable details get lost in pursuit of that simpler aesthetic. So, what should you do? Is there a way to add more detail but still keep the design clean and minimal? And you know what I'm gonna say? No. Just kidding, of course there is. And this ultimately enables us to design logos that communicate everything they need to without overcomplicating them. So for this technique, let's start by looking at the simplified guitar logo and consider areas where I could add more detail. So let's start by zooming into the top of the guitar, select the pen tool, and I'm then going to click on the edge of the design where I'd like to add some more detail that reflects a real world guitar. Now I'm going to click to create a second point and drag out the curve. And you can see it wants to continue this curve, so to cut this continuation, I just need to click on that last anchor point. Now I'm going outside of the design and creating another point to define a sort of sideways shark fin shape. Lastly, click on the first anchor point to close and complete the shape. And don't worry that it looks a bit rubbish on the outside because we'll fix all that later on. Next, let's select the eyedropper tool and sample the background color so it actually looks cut out. And now we need to duplicate this on the other side. And yes, we could draw this again manually, but if you're a bit like me and a, a bit of a stickler for consistency, well, let's keep them identical. So press Command or Control Y to enter outline mode, which is essentially a wireframe preview that can help when lining things up. Let's zoom in nice and close and drag this over whilst holding Alt or Option and Shift to create a duplicate. Then flip this duplicate horizontally. Now Illustrator also lets us zoom in up to 64,000% so we can check that everything is perfectly aligned and looking good. And this technique can be applied to the rest of the letters as well. So rather than simply using an off-the-shelf font, which in this case is Montserrat, we can now go ahead and add similar cuts to some of the letters in a few select places. This makes for a more original logo design and enables more synergy between the logo mark and the typography. And you may be thinking, yeah, but Dan, what if I change the background color? Aren't those weird shapes going to be like sticking out the sides? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Because if I change the background color to yellow, you can see that this is clearly an issue, but one that's easily fixed. Simply select each shape individually and select the letter you want to knock it out from. And with them both selected, head over to the Pathfinder panel and this time select minus front, 
which will subtract the top shape from the bottom shape. Do this for all of the shapes and these delicious details will be permanently etched into your design. And honestly, my logos, they're pretty clean and simple, oftentimes simplifying real world shapes and objects as part of the design. And being able to reintroduce these subtle details has really helped me level up the quality and originality of my logo designs. Okay, this next one is an absolute must. Math. <laughs> Nothing wild because in all honesty, I was never all that good at math, but this approach will enable sniper-like precision for your work. And again, once you know this technique, it's going to change the way you work forever. So here's a look at the final design. Now this of course is a pizza logo with colors sort of borrowed from another well-known brand. Whoops, definitely not Domino's. And you can see that it's divided into six sections. So first off, I created two circles and drew a horizontal line, making sure they're all centrally aligned. Then I selected the rotate tool and pressed return on the keyboard to bring up this window. And for the angle, I entered 360 degrees divided by six. Illustrator will do the math right inside the box for you. So if you'd like more slices of pizza, simply enter a higher value. Now, do not click OK. Instead, click Copy. The window will close and the line will be duplicated at a 60 degree angle. And the angle is 60 degrees because that's the sum of 360 divided by six. Again, stop. And before you press anything, hold down Command or Control and press D to repeat the transform action. This will create another duplicate of the line, again at a further 60 degrees. And now that all of the lines are intersecting, I can go to the Pathfinder panel and select the Divide option. Ungroup the object a few times, and all of the individual segments can now be separated as individual shapes. Next, I'm going to add another circle for the pepperoni and switch that stroked outline to a solid fill. And using the rotate tool and with the circle selected, I'm going to hover over the center of the design and hold alter option and click. Doing this defines this as the central point of rotation. So as I rotate the shape, it will rotate around this point. And if I do this whilst holding shift, I can snap this to the opposite side at exactly 180 degrees. Now I just need to select both circles, rotate by 60 degrees and repeat the transform just like we did before. And the pepperoni will now be in exactly the same position on each slice of pizza. You can also use the same technique that we covered at the beginning if you'd like to round off the corners of the crust or any other sharp edges. And the way I get around this is by using the arrow keys to nudge the shape out and select any duplicate anchor points with the direct selection tool. Simply delete them and then reconnect the remaining anchor points by selecting them and pressing Command or Control J to join them together. And the reason it's a good idea to remove these duplicates is because A, they will cause you problems further down the line, especially if your logo design is more complex, and B, because they will stop you adjusting the radius of that corner. Now yes, this process can be a bit tedious, especially with multiple slices of pizza. So a quick fix in this example would be to get one crust looking correct and then repeat the same steps to duplicate it by 60 degrees around that central point and then repeat. And this is why the best designers integrate this mathematical mindset into their workflow, because it gives their designs an unparalleled level of precision, which just makes your logo appear more professional, but also it's just quicker and easier than doing it manually. So those are three techniques that change the way I design logos forever. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned the importance of knowing which tools to use for logo design. So if you'd like to learn 13 tools that I use to design a sexy logo for my second channel, you'll want to check out this video right here. 